Hello, my name is Theo, and this is Beyond Blender. This is part one of a series of videos where the aim is to create a fantasy style scene, complete with playing cards, a beautiful drinking goblet, and finally, the scene itself. In this video, we'll be diving into the magical world of Blender as we create stunning fantasy playing cards with artwork generated by artificial intelligence. In this case, Mid Journey, which I'm sure you've heard of. Links to the images from Mid Journey are in the video description, so if you want to download those and create your own cards, please do so. So the scene we're going to be creating uh, in, in the final series or the final part of this series will be similar to this, but, but we need to add the goblet as well at some point. So it will look different to this, but on the same lines. Right, with that said, here are the cards that I created using those uh, AI generated images. These are a couple of mask images that we're going to use on the cards. So we can highlight areas of metallic and non-metallic. These are the actual original images from Mid Journey. So I took those, put them into Affinity Photo, mirrored them, and then created the cards that you just saw. I think they look great, really cool. So let's jump over to Blender. I've just downloaded the uh, version 3.4.1, which is cool. And we'll uh, select the uh, default light and the cube. And pew, they've gone. Now before we carry on, crack on, hop over to add add-ons and just make sure you've got images, import images as planes enabled. Because we'll be using that to import the, uh, the card, one of them at least. So let's start off with the dragon card which is the back of the card, effectively. And you can change some of these parameters here on the right-hand side. I just left them as, as you see there. And select the card and click Import Images as Planes. And that will load and create a plane, or the image, should I say, and then create the plane to fit that image. So let's just switch off the uh, scene lights and scene mode, so we can see that. And you'll notice there, the back of that is red. That's because I have face orientation turned on by default, which I've set to red, or it should be red by default. And uh, that will help you identify bad normals. So I've just turned that off for now. Now you could leave the card like this, it's very simple, and, uh, and continue with the other cards. But what we're going to do is we're going to round off the corners a little bit, a little bit of tidying up in the outliner there first. So make sure you give them proper names so you know what's what. And we'll jump into edit mode by hitting the tab key. Vertex mode. We'll select all the vertices by double tapping the A key. And then we can do Control Shift and B. As opposed to Control B which is for bevel. And Control Shift and B will bevel vertices not just edges. So with that I've given it a value of around 5. For the bevel so you just scroll your mouse wheel and make sure you have five points there and then now we're going to select one point one vertex and then the opposing one on the other side press the j key to join them together and create an edge and do the same for all the corners just work your way around and do that and we'll do the corner one there so we've got a nice quad set up for the corners i'll just speed this up because it's uh, tedious to watch and this is the front view, but the card is facing sideways. So I'm going to go to edit mode, select the face. You can see there the rotation values are everywhere. So and apply the rotation. So that's facing now correctly in the front viewport. Just like that. Now we need to add subdivisions to this because we can't manipulate these cards i.e. bend them or twist them in any way unless we've got more geometry to work with. So in, again in edit mode, press Ctrl R, move your mouse pointer over the appropriate area and use your mouse wheel, scroll wheel to uh, add more cuts. What you're looking for are these kind of square um, faces which work, tend to work best with subdivision and uh, and de deforming objects, so roughly square is fine. At that point, let's make this thicker, give it some thickness with the solidify modifier. 
and uh, you know, play around with the thickness, whatever you like. I think I've used 0.003 depending on the scale that it imported at. And you'll notice the front and back share the same view, as in the dragon is, is mirrored the wrong way on the back side of the card. So we need to flip the UVs here. So with the card selected, we want to select the back faces only, one side of the card. And then you can scale that in the X axis by one or minus one. I can't remember which one I used there. Um, and that will just flip it so you can see there. The dragon is now facing the right way on both sides. This is left to right. This is interesting though, if you switch to um, EV or Material Preview, which I'll show you in a minute, there is a bit of a, a visual glitch I think. But I noticed there as well we've got these like dark pixels on the edge. I think that's because Clip was enabled on the Images as Planes import. So I'm going to select all of these faces just on the outskirts. On the, on the outside of the card all around there you can see there they're right on the edge normally that should be fine but to fix it I'm just going to scale the, all of those in just a little bit so they sit comfortably within the the paper area and that will get rid of that dark patch that we saw there so going back to a viewport let's add a subdivision service modifier you can see there, that's looking a little bit weird. It's kind of flattened out the, um, the solidify. So we need to add some creases to these edges just to hold the card shape a bit better. So I'm gonna alt click and shift alt click all around these edges, around the card. And I'll speed this up because it's quite tedious. So with all of those edges selected, there we go. We can go over to mean crease and enter a value of one. That will make that um, basically a much sharper corner, as you can see there. And there you go. Looking much better. Right, with that done, let's hop over to Material Preview and check this out. The dragon is now facing the same way as the other side, which we just fixed. But in Cycles mode, it's correct so I don't know if that's just the way EV works um, so I did flip the normals or the, um, the UVs should I say but it doesn't matter anyway let's play around with some deformation so we add a simple deform modifier you can see the twist there is on by default you want to switch that to bend not twist and I'm just going to enter a value of 15 degrees just to start with. And that's looking pretty cool. It's quite a simple modifier, so nothing much to change there. Now let's hop over to the shading environment, the workspace. And we want to add a bit more to this card. So we'll duplicate the, um, the image there, that node, and we'll add uh, a paper um, normal effectively so we'll select that switch that to non-color very important otherwise this won't work and with con uh, control T with a node wrangler add-on enabled we just add the texture coordinates and mapping nodes as well we can add them manually and hook them up like this and we'll add a normal map node connect this normal map to that node and plug it into the normal on the printable BSDF. You can see there that's working as expected. So you notice this is not a square image and I don't really like working with non-square images for texture mapping but in this instance it wasn't a huge deal um, and it looks just fine as it is so we'll go with that. You can see it's a little bit distorted but not a huge difference. So that's fine. And that works really well. It's got a nice texture there. Perhaps a little bit aggressive. So let's maybe turn that down to 0.5. And to be fair, these are quite subtle. You won't notice them at a, dif a distance, of course. Um, and also depending on the angles and lighting and so on. Let's just make a bit more s space for ourselves here. And uh, we'll add a couple of more nodes maybe. 
So just move that out of the way. Duplicate that again and drop it there. Don't forget to connect the mapping. And this time we want to add the um, what the roughness uh, texture map. I'll put a link to these in the video description. Or you can use your own paper textures you can download from places like Ambient CG and so forth. And Polyhaven perhaps if they have it there. So with that roughness, again remember to, remember to use non-color. Plug that into our roughness. Now use Control Shift and click to preview these nodes individually using the Node Wrangler. Always helps. And that's fine, we can leave that for now as is. If you're happy with that, that's absolutely fine. But what I also wanted to do was isolate the weather design sets, the dragon element. I want that to be slightly well metallic. So I created these two masks. This one for the dragon image, and the other one is for the for the other cards. So with that one selected now we can drop that into the metallic slot. What I didn't realise is that I wanted to um, the white part should be the bit that's metallic. So I'm going to throw in a colour ramp node and flip the colour ramp so the white becomes black and black becomes white. So now I've got the metallic part and I just did a little test there to see how that's working. It's quite difficult to see but trust me it's there and it works. So with that done we've now got a lovely looking playing card with some metallic areas and non-metallic areas and a normal map and some roughness. So with that done I'm going to copy the card so shift D to create a duplicate, rename it in the outliner to one of the other cards. In this case, I'll start with the Jester, the Joker. And all you need to do is copy the material by clicking that little file icon there to create another new material. Rename it to Jester or whatever you like. And then we'll change the image for the color, for the base color. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do. Apart from, you notice there, the mask for the metallic is, is using the one for the other card, so we select this other one instead. And uh, that will then fix that problem for us. So, very, very simple. So, we're just going to go through the same process now for all the other cards. I'll speed that up, you don't have to see that three more times. So, uh, I'll just play that back at four times the speed. So, I'm just duplicating the card, renaming it, duplicating the material, changing the image, and that's it, we're done. So we've just done the prince there, or the jack, the queen, and finally the king. And there you go. Let's just change the HDRI so we can see how this looks. That's looking pretty good. And all of our modifiers are still there, of course, because we copied the, uh, the first card which had those on already. There is one more thing we can do, and this is up to you if you don't want to do this really. You don't have to because it's, it's very subtle, but it is there, but it's very hard to see under certain lighting conditions. So it really will depend on your lighting uh, in the final scene, or however you want to make this in, in your own style. So I'll just make a little bit of space here under the roughness. Duplicate the roughness um, node there. And don't forget to plug it in of course. And now we're going to select, you guessed it, fingerprints, um, which you've seen before in my other videos. So any of these maps will do really, but we'll just go for the opacity one, that looks okay. So with that, again, make sure it's non-color, and then drag that, well, not drag it. You want to mix these two nodes, and Node Wrangler is really cool in that you can hold down Control shift and then with your right mouse button, drag across those two nodes. And that will do the same as adding a mixed node, as you just saw there. So if that doesn't work, or you don't have Node Wrangler installed or enabled, just add a mixed node and connect them up in that fashion. Uh, in the bottom slot, color 2 should be set to white for this to work properly. As far as I'm aware, do correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, here's the fingerprints. We can see there that worked out pretty well. And you can see the effect of the mix. So it is there, but it's very subtle, as I said. So you might struggle to see it, especially with this like highly detailed image and the, um, the normal map there as well. So to help that a little bit, I'm going to throw in a, another color ramp node and just crunch these a little bit. I've changed it to ease from linear, just uh, if you didn't notice that. And um, just 
bring these in a little bit so we get a little bit more definition on the fingerprints and uh, control shift and click on the other node to bring it back and again it's very subtle but it is there trust me I've, I've tested it many times and uh, it is there you can see it in some places but again it will vary on the on the lighting you have in your scene so let's continue that with all of the other cards which we've already created okay as you just saw so it's quite easy to do this just copy those nodes that we've added and paste them into the other um, shaders and materials and just connect them up so I'm gonna select this one this one and that one those three go to the other materials paste it in and then just connect them up in exactly the same way for all of the materials and there you go all done so these are basic things to do really they're not really that complicated and we're almost done just going back and uh, making sure they're all connected and there you go you can actually see now the fingerprints uh, <laughs> where those marks are um, and you can play around with the values of the location of those so they're not all the same but as I say you can't really see them so um, yeah that's the cards so in the next video we'll look at the goblet and that's going to be amazing so uh, make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss that thanks for watching see you next time bye for now